Great. Welcome everybody to the Mastermind Small Business Mastermind Foundation webinar on business planning. How to make how to write business plans that actually work. Um, can I just get a couple of people, or one or more people, to let me know if the sound quality is okay? You can hear me, um, okay or not? Just type in the chat window that it's okay or not. Or um, you can also in the top of your screen you have an interact button and on the interact button you can uh, yep. come down Sounds good. And Sounds good. thank you james and thank you jasmine that's great all right we're on the way <clears throat> business planning how to write business plans that actually work and let's get straight into it here we go um this is what today's webinar is going to look like. <laughs> I just noticed that that slide is missing a K. I don't know where I don't know where the K is gone. <laughs> so business plans that work. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's my, <laughs> it's <laughs> right. Business plans that actually work better than the wording there. Um, so this is just this is another uh, business planning is another one of my favourite topics, and I can go on about it for hours and hours and hours. So. Stop me if I get boring, but towards the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you some information about the variation, the various next steps and small small and large steps that you can take if you want to take another step, and I trust that sounds okay. So general comment before we go on. It's been proven time and time again that passively sitting and listening to someone talking means you're going to forget 90% of what you heard in less than a week. So if you want to get as much value um, and much return on your investment of time in being part of this workshop, workshop you need to participate. And the best way to ensure that you're focused is by working through the set of worksheets as we go along. And as I said before, you can download those from the link at the top of the chat window, tiny.cc panel page. Above all, ask questions via the chat window in the bottom left of your screen. Um, uh, I hope everybody's worked out how the how the webinar screen works. I'm going to keep everybody on mute um, uh, unless there's a particularly good reason. It's just that as soon as we start taking people off mute, um, we often uh, find that uh, technology starts to get in the way. So if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them, but just type them into your chat window and then... And then uh, to take uh, someone off mute and to have a conversation, then of course I'll do so. Um, multitasking. Don't do any of these. If you're going to get distracted by Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, email, text messages, just turn it all off. Don't think you can be focused on Facebook and get value from this workshop at the same time. It just won't happen, not even for women, obviously, because multitasking is actually a myth that's been proven. Argue with me, argue with me if you'd like, but the science is out. Multitasking is a myth for everyone. Um, honest, <laughs> just trust me on this. I'm not a doctor. Anyway, um, this is what we're going to go through today. We're going to check in where you are now in relation to business planning. We're going to talk about the three reasons why planning is so important and the two, re two reasons why planning seems so hard. And then we're going to talk about the six criteria for a business plan that actually works. I'm going, to, I'm going to read you one of my famous business bedtime stories. We're going to talk about the lessons from the best bedtime story. I'm going to give you information about a special offer. And then we're going to get into action, actually do stuff. And for those of you who haven't met me yet, this is me. And I actually am that handsome. And there's a few people on this call who actually can attest to the fact that I am that handsome. Um, and so I'm Roland Hennigroot. I'm a business coach and a mentor and an educator. And I help small business owners feel great about themselves and about their business by making business fun again. And planning is one of those topics that's, ap that's absolutely at the foundation of, um, of a fun business that sustains you for years to come. And I'm also... The author of a series of books, a trilogy, as a matter of fact, the 10 Truths Trilogy, business books for people who don't read business books but should. And today's topic is a business plan with a business without a plan achieves everything in it, which is 
truth number two in the first book, and there's truths in uh, about planning in all three books. Um, and um, and this is what I want from today. This is what I hope to achieve. Because I want all of you to walk away enthusiastic and with at least one action that you're committed to taking in your business around effective planning in your business. And I want you all to know that you can take simple, easy steps to get ahead with any of the challenges in your business. It doesn't have to be about big steps. It's small steps, actually. Many small steps actually start to build a business that is fun and that sustains you for years to come. And because a lot of us business owners... We're great tradespeople or great technicians, professionals. And we know a lot about about our profession or our trade, but to be a great small business owner and to to owner and to build a fun business that sustains you for years to come, you have to have a solid understanding of all the key aspects of developing your business, not just your profession or trades. In these, in my opinion, are the key aspects of business that we all need to and all do wrestle with from time to time vision and and pl- uh, vision and purpose planning that's what we're talking about today strategic thinking and goal setting then uh, numbers and taking control of your business finger on the pulse uh, financial management and um, and profit so that all the money stuff which is different from numbers because numbers um, can include stuff that's not about finance often does um, marketing customers, sales, so lead generation, lead conversion, and then looking after customers, systemization, in innovation or quality assurance, um, your staff, your people, you, leadership, and finally something that I refer to as the rhythm of business, the regularity and predictability of business. They're um, what I see as the big, big 11, actually. And the thing is, it's a bit like that, right? It's all just a bit much. It's overwhelming and it's daunting and it's just doing your head and head in half the time. And um, and by the way, uh, on this topic of, of overwhelm, I've actually recently created a, uh, a really in-depth and thought-provoking quiz uh, about overwhelm and fun in business. And I'm sure you will find it uh, thought-provoking to take the time to complete it. It will take, probably take you about 10 minutes or something, and it's um, the link is also on the uh, on that uh, resource page uh, for this webinar, the tiny.cc plan L page. Um, but, so before we go on, um, let's focus on the main causes of that overwhelm and stress and feeling daunted for you. I'd like you to go to your worksheet, and on the third page of your worksheet, you'll see a question with some space underneath it. And that question, and the question is, right now, right now, this coming month, what's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge you face in your business? What is the one thing that keeps you awake most? Uh, um, Somebody um, is not sure, is confused about the worksheet. To the worksheets on that page, tiny.cc, plan L page, in the top of your... um, in the top of your chat window on the left of this um, webinar chat window, you see a link, http forward slash um, tiny dot, um, tiny.cc forward slash plan L page. Um, if you go to that page, you see one of the first links. There's a list of bullet point, a bullet point with links. And one of the first links is the webinar worksheet. If you uh, click on that, that downloads a PDF. And um, ideally, you print it out and you uh, go through the PDF as you're working, uh, working your way, uh, as you're listening to the through the to the webinar. Um, so, if you haven't done so, I really suggest that you do, um, because working your way through the webinar worksheets as you're listening really uh, means you'll get an awful lot more out of this webinar. And by the way, I just mentioned that there was a um, page. To uh, page three for the the, the, qu- the question that was meant to be page two, but you'll see that the question on the worksheet is what right now? What is your most pressing issue? The biggest challenge you face in your business? What's the one thing that keeps you awake most? Take a moment, take a moment, and write down the answer to that question on your worksheet. What is 
the most your most pressing issue right now? We're going to call that a minute. And let's see how we're all feeling about this topic. Um, where is the poll? There's the poll. One second, it's coming. The right poll. Oh, so, there. Yeah. Right. There's our poll with four questions. Four, four answers. When I think about business planning, what I feel is, well, A, nothing much, because I don't think having a plan um, is gonna make any kind of difference to me. Or B, I feel daunted, guilty or ashamed, because I know I should have a business plan, but I haven't gotten around to it and I don't know where to start. Or C, I feel frustrated because I, because I have a business plan. I spent a lot of money and time creating it, but I haven't looked at it for ages and ages. Or D, I'm fired up because I have a plan. We look at it all the time and incorporate it in our regular strategic planning sessions. It's a live document that's constantly being updated. Please go ahead and vote. A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. Let me give you another couple of minutes. A couple of other one, a couple of minutes. Um, 30 seconds. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds to make up your mind. When I think about business planning, what I feel is either nothing much or daunted or frustrated or fired up. And I think we've got everybody now. One more. Yes, I think that's it. Bang. And so the outcome, the result is 50, exactly 50% um, B and 50% C. So people are either frustrated or daunted. Frustrated or daunted. Um, <clears throat> and, 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 and that's more or less what I expected, of course, because that's my experience. It's small business owners' perspective uh, or prospective business owners and I, I generally fall into B or C. We're either daunted because we don't know where to start. Or we've got one, but it's not really making any difference to us, and we and we all we haven't looked at it. So it's again, it's gathering dust at the bottom of a cabinet somewhere. And the problem with that is the truth of my of of the truth number two of my first book: a business without a plan achieves everything in it. In other words, you do need a plan. A plan is crucial to the success of any business. Without a plan, your business will go nowhere fast. And look, I'm, 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 I'm not telling you anything you didn't know already, right? Because, because <clears throat> here's the thing, there's business plans and there's business plans. All business plans are not created equal, in other words. Lots of business plans actually have no impact on the business, do they? And so what I want to do is uh, give you some of the basic bits of understanding and tools about planning in this webinar that are going to make a big difference in helping create a business plan that actually does work as a real business development tool for you. And, um, and I'll be leaving you with some simple actions around that today to take that you can, um, that you can move ahead with straight away. So let's talk about the principles, the principles of business planning. Um, because you've probably heard it said many times that we need to have a business plan. But, what, but why is that actually? What, what makes planning such an important thing? There's a lot of uncertainty about the value of business planning planning, any planning for a matter. But there's a famous quote that's attributed to uh, to a number of different generals throughout the ages, including, including Clausewitz von Clausewitz, as well as Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, um, well, I think it was originally von Clausewitz, so we'll keep it with him. No battle plan ever survives the first contact with the enemy. I love that quote, and it's so 
true. He, um, he, by the way, he doesn't want to look much like a general, does he? A bit of a pussy. But anyway, <laughs> General von K apparently was fearsome in the early days of the 19th century. But no battle plan ever suffice the first contact with the enemy. So, so if battle plans have to be thrown out the window as soon as the battle starts, you could ask, why would we make plans at all? Right? I mean, business plans are no different than battle plans in my experience too. So as soon as the real world comes around, the plans are out of date. So why bother making a plan? Because that's how it goes. When I used to, you know, when I used to be a builder um, in the dim days in the past, uh, I was a builder for 20 years. I, um, uh, I used to have to create project plans for the construction works. Um, and every time I'd create a, or update a plan, I'd send it to the client and the architect and the engineer and the relevant summies and my foreman and all that kind of stuff. And um, and I'd send it out to them. Um, I'd print it out on this big a, 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 A1 printer on a big flow chart, and it was um, very impressive looking. And I and I bought this A A1 printer for it specially, which in you know in the nineties um, was a big investment. Um, let me tell you, um, and um, and I sp- create these big flow charts or Gantt charts in Microsoft Project, and, um, and and it looked incredibly impressive. And I'd send it off, and literally before it would get to the client, it'd be out of date because something something would have changed. Very frustrating, frustrating sometimes. I can assure you. And now some people are going to draw the conclusion that there's therefore no point developing plans and committing to them because they're going to have to change and change again sometimes every month as the plan is rolled out. But on the face of it, that seems like a reasonable conclusion to draw. But it isn't. It's exactly the wrong conclusion to draw, see, because it's precisely because the world is going to change the moment that the plan is created and committed to paper, that your planning must be thorough and especially ongoing. Planning never stops. Planning never stops. As soon as you send the plan to the printer, it's time to start thinking about the next plan. A great general can make swift, accurate, strategic decisions because of his planning. That's what made Von K. Clausewitz so effective, that's what made Napoleon so effective, and all the great generals since and before. Planning gives a general the understanding and the knowledge to allow him to respond quickly, accurately, and strategically to the changing battlefront. And so it is with business planning. Planning is a verb. <clears throat> planning, what you need to understand is that planning is actually never about the document that is created. It's all about the work that goes into creating the plan. Planning is a verb. It's not a noun. It must continuously be ongoing. So the three principles on which business plans must rest if they are to make a difference are, one, they have to spell out exactly where the business is headed and how it is expected to get there. Two, it's uh, it's, it's got to have a, it's it's to have a fixed set of criteria to test every decision in the business against. And three, it, to know your options and to be able to make swift and accurate decisions when your business circumstances change from the ones that you planned for. Someone once said, "Planning is guessing," and it is. Planning is guessing. Constantly, we expect the future to look like this, um, <clears throat> and based on that, we set our, our our options, our strategy in place. Then, the reality turns out to be different. We adjust our uh, our, um, our our strategies constantly. The first principle addresses our goals and our best guess at how we're going to achieve those those goals. Knowing what we know today and looking at the future from our current vantage point, obviously, if tomorrow or next month we know new stuff that we didn't know last month, then we may need to adjust our goals or our strategies to achieving those goals. If your goal is to hit a million dollars revenue selling your particular widget or thing or drink, as, as one of our fellow participants uh, would be well aware of, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're selling your particular thing at, uh, you know, X dollars and next week a well-funded competitor arrives on the market with a widget 
or a thing that is exactly as good as yours, but 30% cheaper than the price that you uh, that you set, you simply have to you have to adjust. There's no point saying, well, I can't do it for less because you have to. You may have to adjust your goals or your marketing strategies or your profit expectations or your manufacturing processes or whatever. whatever whether you like it or not, your plan will have to change. That's exactly the reason I said that planning is not about the document, about, but about the work of planning. Too many times have I seen businesses continue to push a fully laden wheelbarrow uphill with a flat tyre because that, that's what the plan calls for. Keep pushing, guys, harder, harder, harder. Even if it's clear, you're never going to get there. Probably a much better idea to make a detour via a service station and pump up the tyre. With a nicely inflated tyre, you'll be able to make, a, make up for some lost time. And although you may arrive on the top of the hill a little later, later than you planned, you'll get there and without a busted wheel and a busted back. The second principle about having, set of, uh, having a set of criteria to test your decisions against and actions against, right? And remember the three criteria. So it's about direction of decision criteria. How do we measure? The second one is how do we measure um, and test our decisions and actions? Um, that's just as important as the first one. We're constantly making decisions about what to do and what not to do, about which clients to say yes to and which clients to refer on to someone else or to say no to. Um, about... <clears throat> about what work to do and what, what not to do and about how to carry out our work and our services without a set, uh, set defined set of principles verbalized and committed to, you and your people will be sailing blind. <laughs> how would you like to be able to do that? I can't believe that someone, that people, he could actually do that, but apparently he can. Um, the principles help you make the, the principles that you um, that you define that you set down in your plan help you make the right decisions and take the right actions to keep you on track to your goals. Every general has a set of engagement principles as well. If they didn't, the world would be in an even greater mess than it is already. The last of the three core principles, though, <clears throat> sorry. The, Engagement principles is not a word of saying the, 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 the having criteria to test your decisions against. Um, so that's the second. And the third one, the last of the three core principles that makes it clear why, why business planning is crucial is really the one that I've been talking about a lot already. When you go and execute a plan, the world immediately changes and you need to know how to adjust your strategies and goals in response to those changing realities. Having spent the time developing your plan in the first place means you'll be able to respond appropriately, accurately, and swiftly. That's the whole, that's the biggest secret about business planning. That your plan is live and constantly adjusted. If your, your, and if your business plan is designed with those three principles in mind, you can be sure it won't be kept in the bottom of a drawer. It will sit on top of your desk and it will be doggy and it will have smudged and smudges over it and, and scribbles in the margin and coffee stains and doodles. You will look at it every day and so will everyone else who has anything to do with it. Um, like, oh, it's like a question from Randall in Melbourne. Hi, Randall. Except planning is important. I know that, but what makes it so hard? And I'm so happy you asked that question, Randall, because as it happens, I was just coming to that. Um, because you see, here's the thing. It's actually not that hard at all, but it looks as if it would be. And that's because of two big misunderstandings. Two big misunderstandings. <laughs> that looks nothing like our marriage, my marriage. Um, I've talked about the first misunderstanding already, namely the planning. The planning is about the about the business plan, not about the work you do to create the plan. That's a misunderstanding one. But so what happens is that people believe they have to create this perfect plan 
that addresses all the opportunities and all the strategies and all the eventualities, and it has to have all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. And that's the only way a proper business plan is created. And they see this business plan sitting in the bottom drawer, hopelessly out of date, never looked at. So they say to themselves, obviously, that's not how you create a business plan that works because it ain't working right now. Okay. And so they don't, they don't do the planning because they don't understand how to create the perfect plan. They don't understand that the perfect plan is any plan you start on and work on and you continue to work on to make better all the time. It truly doesn't matter how you start and what the outcome of it is. The only thing that matters is that you start and that you do it and that you keep going it and that you keep doing it. And the other misunderstanding about business planning is that people expect the business plan to look like the one their accountant gave them a template for or, or the one they got from the bank or downloaded as a template from some government website. And, you know, those things that those nicely bound documents with a content contents page and an executive summary up front, all bound in a nice folder and full of diagrams and projections and spreadsheets and signed letters from accountants, etc., etc. And that's what I mean, Randall. Um, is that what your picture is of a, of a business plan? Is that what all of you have as your picture of a business plan? Is that what you expect to have to write? Well, because you don't. Because those are, the, those are exactly the types of plans that end up gathering dust at the bottom of a filing cabinet and that cost a lot of money and a lot of time and are overwhelming and daunting thing projects to get started with because this is, the, this is the second half of that big understanding. There are two types of business plans, two very distinct types of business plans, internal and external plans. And the nicely bound plan with the executive summary and, uh, and, and the indices and the, and the diagrams and all that stuff is an external plan. And an external plan is designed to impress the bank or some kind of external organization when you're applying for funding or loans or something like that or a lease. External. An external plan is a document that is created as a once-off. It's a snapshot. It's a snapshot of a moment in time, and it's it's created for a specific purpose, and the template you got from the government's small business website or the accountant or wherever is perfect for that. It is intended as a snapshot in time, a moment in time. This is what the business looks like, and because of this, I am applying for this loan or I'm applying for this lease or I am, you know, one of those kind of things. It's a snapshot giving a loan provider or, or, or some external party or, you know, someone who might want to invest in the business or a partner, a potential partner or whatever, and a really comprehensive, thorough, exact, clear, clean insight in what the business looks like today uh, at, at many levels. And... <clears throat> And those kind of documents are perfect for that and, it, and uh, templates are perfect for that and it's perfect to go and get, um, get, that, to get help from your accountant to, uh, to put that together or whoever you want for that. Uh, you can actually pay people to go and do it for you and, um, and that's fine. <clears throat> but the kind of plan we're interested in is what I call an internal plan. An internal plan is an entirely different beast and it can look like whatever you want it to look like. It, but it, because it has one function and one function only, and that is to get everyone on the same page, pulling in the same direction, looking in the same direction, succinctly. <coughs> so if you think, I clicked that one, I had too fast, so we're back to there, so you, know, you weren't allowed to read that yet. <laughs> Got a sneak peek at the next slide. So but if you think in terms of creating an internal rather than an external plan, an internal rather than an external planning. You take those three t- principles I talked about above in mind, that the plan is about getting clear where we want to go and how we think we're going to get there at this stage, that the plan is a tool we use to check our decisions and action against, and finally, that its, uh, that its aim is to help you and your people understand your business better so that you'll end up making better decisions. The project of, this, of starting a business plan suddenly isn't that daunting anymore. And I hope, Randall, that that feels better for you and for everybody else. Because these are the six criteria that an internal business plan must meet for a truly 
for it to truly enter the success of the business. But first, it must be a live document and kept live by the people directly affected by it. Remember what I said? Coffee stains, smudges, scribbles in the margin, doodle, doodles all over it on everybody's desk or hanging on the wall. So a live document that's kept live by the people directly affected by it monthly, quarterly, annually. Two, it must be, must be designed with the people who are directly affected by it in mind. Three, it must be easy to use and easily accessible for the people directly affected by it. Four, it must be designed to address the short, medium and long term goals of the business. And five, it must be a reflection of and state the purpose and mission of the business. And six, it must be short, ideally one page, one page, not a whole bound set of documents with cover letters and all that kind of stuff and cover pages and executive summaries. But one page is the whole thing that it's uh, the whole plan. And, um, <clears throat> and so most of those, most of those things, we've, most of those criteria we've already talked about self-explanatory so far, but the one thing we haven't specifically talked about is the purpose and mission of the business. And, and, that's the purpose and mission of the business is a whole webinar in itself. It's more than a webinar. It's actually the reason for being, but anyway, um, and I think what I'll do is I'll run the, the next webinar, uh, masterminds webinar, the end of April uh, about the purpose of business. But so what that means is that you've done, that you have to have done the work on the purpose, have to have the absolute clarity about the purpose of the, of your business. Um, the mission and vision, if you will, absolute clarity. Why does your business exist and why would anybody else care about it? Why, what's, what is your business on this earth for and why would anybody care about that? Um, like I said, it's, um, um, I have a webinar on exactly that topic and uh, I'll be running, I'll, I'll here and now decided that I'll run that um, topic end of April, last Thursday in April. So clarity about the purpose um, or mission of your business is an absolute must to be able to create a business plan that works, and there's no doubt about that at all. The other thing that may need further explanation is number six, that the plan must be short, ideally no more than a page long. Okay, So that's quite different from the standard business plan that we think of when we talk about business planning. And that illustrates the difference between internal and external plans. I'm not suggesting if you want to go to the bank to give you a half a million dollar overdraft that you walk, walk into the meeting with the manager, you know, the, the meeting with the loan manager with a one page document. I don't expect you're going to have a very long meeting. But if you want to create a plan that lives on everyone's desk and that is used by everyone to guide their work and their decisions and actions, every page past the first one means the, the plan becomes less effective. Every page, more than one page, makes the overall effectiveness of the plan significantly uh, less. I mean, it's, I don't know the exact numbers, but I wouldn't be surprised that um, that if, the, if you go from one to two pages, your effectiveness of, the, of a plan will reduce by 30% and it goes on like that. So every page past the first, every page past the first um uh, means the plan becomes less less effective. Trust me on that. And that's the perfect segue to mention about a couple of the one-page business plan templates that you can actually download from the resources page, that same resources page that you downloaded the webinar work page, uh, worksheet, um, tiny.cc forward slash plan L page at the top of your chat window. Um, and there's uh, three different uh, one-page business plan uh, plan templates that you can download there and um, you can get going with it and this is the first of those three this is my own version um, I call it the one page growth plan um, we can't go through each one of them in great detail of course because that you know you will be on this webinar way too long but I'll just quickly um, run through the headlines of them if you will that the, so it's this one's my, uh, my, my own one, a new perspective, one page plan. As I mentioned before, I truly believe that a business plan must rest on absolute clarity about the purpose of the business and it's structured that way. This, um, at the base, 
and, 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 and when I talked base, it's from left to right. So we start from the left, corporate values and corporate beliefs, uh, you, which which come from your personal values and your personal beliefs, which um, which leads to your purpose, from left to right, second column, and guiding principles. And then we're talking about um, uh, brand promise, uh, our big, hairy, audacious goal, the 10 to, 10 to 25 year goal, depending on uh, what suits you, um, which breaks down into the first three to five year target and then the goal for this year. And then we focus on the key strengths, um, the key weaknesses, the key opportunities and key threats. Um, and then we finally zero in on the monthly milestones for the year ahead. And that follows, that fills out to be the one page plan. Um, it's really comprehensive and really effective and really, really effective at engaging your team with the strategic direction of the business or the strategic intent of the business. Um, another version of a one-page plan is something called the Business Model Canvas that was created in a, in a book called the Business Model, Gener uh, Business Model Generation by Alexander Osterwalder, Osterwalder and Yves Pigneur. It's a fantastic book if you're interested in reading um, further about this topic. I would strongly um, encourage you to get this book. Um, there's also a link to a video about this Business Model Canvas on the on the landing page, the tiny.cc forward slash panel page. Um, it's quite a famous um, famous tool, this business model canvas. Uh, a lot of uh, management consultants uh, use it. Um, there's a link to a video, as I said, on my resources page uh, that explains the, 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 the concept um, in a couple of minutes. Worth a look, but for now to say, suffice to say that the canvas takes quite a different pr approach to business and strategic planning. And the third, um, the third option um, I've put down for you to play with is the toilet paper entrepreneur's prosperity plan. The toilet paper entrepreneur. Yeah, um, don't talk to me today about the <laughs> title of this book, but it's actually Mike Mike Mahalovich. It's actually a surprisingly good book. Uh, he's quite an odd character, and it's you know, it's an odd title, but he says some really cool things in uh, his books. It's, uh, he's written three books now. Um, I think the second second one is called the Pumpkin Plan, um, which is also about business planning. So it's also worth looking at. But <clears throat> um, I absolutely recommend I recommend the, these books. But he takes quite a different approach to business planning again, and it's reflected in his uh, simple Obsidian Launch Prosperity Plan. Obsidian Launch Prosperity Plan. It's worth a worth a look. Strictly speaking, it's an, it isn't a true one page plan in that the sample is actually two pages, but it's still exceedingly succinct and effective. And so that's the three different tools that I, I um, giving you. Uh, uh, James is uh, uh, the toilet paper link didn't work. Toilet paper link didn't work. Um, okay, um, I'll make a note of it. I won't go. I won't go into that now because then everybody sits around waiting. I'll have to make a note of it. Sorry about that. Uh, but short of that, if you go, if you type in toilet paper entrepreneur, um, you'll find uh, all kinds of resources uh, there. Um, sorry, James, did you say that the that the download link didn't work or that uh, that something else didn't work about the toilet paper? Can you let, just let me know for so I can follow that through, but I won't stick there now. Um, so that is the, the three three samples that, um, that uh, I'm giving you to play with. Um, but as I said before, planning, that it's not about a particular method. The, 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 what's important is that you do something in the form of planning um, and um, uh, thanks James um, the, in the next story that I'm just going about to tell you uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to read to you the business bedtime story about Laura you'll see that she uses a different uh, methods, method for planning again and so that brings us to our bedtime story um, <clears throat> imagine, imagine 
that you're all going to bed and I'm going to tuck you in, snuggle in, lay back and listen to my story. The story of Laura. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago in a country not unlike Australia, Laura had a fashion label. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, Laura had a fashion label and she had her, Laura had a little shop in the city and a fashion label and a small dedicated band of followers for her, her unique brand of office fashion for successful corporate women. Laura's business was four years old and although it was gratifying to see the same customers come back season after season for her latest lines and to know how happy her customers usually were when they left her shop, Laura felt strongly that there was a great opportunity for her to grow the business and bring her unique designs to a larger audience, but she just didn't know where to start. Just didn't know where to start. Should I get involved in social media or maybe I need to take the plunge and open a shop in the CBD or should I look for a partner in Melbourne or knock on the door of Myers and Meyer and how will I finance an expansion and can I continue to manufacture in Australia and what if I'm not good enough to manage more staff in various localities and is the market in Perth the same as the market in Sydney and what if Q Design simply decides to knock off my, my designs and if I grow will I lose the loyalty of my customers, etc., 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 and Laura was stuck in a classic decision paralysis loop. So, working with me, Laura came to realise that the only way to cut through her dilemmas was to face her lack of confidence in business planning head on and, and write a thorough business plan, but in a form that worked for her. And so she did. Laura started big by creating a big mind map in which she wrote down all the dilemmas and questions, and then she systematically ordered them, prioritised them, and answered them. The mind map evolved to a series of small one-page documents for different aspects of the business and a timeline with projections for different stages of the business development. And from there, Laura simply started to work progressively through the plan, and every time another question or dilemma came up, and every time she learned new things or the business environment changed or new opportunities uh, presented themselves, she went to the plan, found a place to house the question or change a strategy or add an outcome. And, but in this simple and constant process, and that's the secret again, it's this constant process, ongoing process of planning, allowed her to be able to focus on the immediate next step ahead every time without being afraid that she'd forget something crucial. Um, and making this, um, this, this commitment to get involved in an appropriate level of consistent planning is the one thing that Laura credited with has credited with starting to shift the business to a new realm. And uh, one and a half years later, uh, Laura had opened a second shop in Sydney and the planning process helped her understand that her opportunities in the short to medium term were not in the CBD nor in large scale production offshore, but in a series of small unique stop shops in specific inner city suburbs um, uh, like Balmain and Mossman in Sydney, followed by similar expansion in uh, Melbourne and other major cities in Australia. And Laura was looking forward to the next five years of consistent, controlled growth and building a loyal national following for her label. And Laura and her customers lived happily ever after. Who said there was no romance in business, eh? But seriously, um, uh, those of you who live in Sydney probably seen her shop. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But she's done very well for herself and continues to do so. And, and the message is clear. I've seen the same thing over and over with my clients. For me personally, I think the biggest lesson from Laura's story was that planning never stops. So let's hear from you. What's come up for you from what's come up for you from everything you've heard me talk about? What did you think when listening to Laura's bedtime story? What about the six principles of effective planning or the idea of internal and external plans? Or what about the top three insights or learnings that you've had or questions that you've had from this workshop or webinar so far? Or maybe you have more questions, more questions and insights or what are your top questions? So please go ahead and write those insights or questions down. Um, as, as you can see, I'll, I'll give you a minute. Um, 
there's some space in your worksheet to uh, to write down those things, those insights or questions. And I'd love to hear share some of those questions. So if you have any insights or questions, um, please type them in and we'll get to those. Um, let me, but let me give you my top takeaways for the moment. And um, someone just said, I have to overcome my fear of starting a plan in your template. Looks like an excellent start. Um, that's great. Yeah, it looked great to hear. I'm really happy that that um, gives you a good starting point. And um, to help you work through that um, that plan, um, my um, especially my second book has um, great and you can get that for free, download that for free as well, of course, the blue book, um, The Ten Truths for Making Your Business Grow. Um, it's got the, the chapter on planning is all about that particular, um, uh, that particular um, uh, template. So um, that'll, uh, that, sh that should give you some help with uh, starting that plan as well. So these are the top insights from my perspective. Business planning is indeed critically important to guide the development of your business. Planning is not, that's the second one, planning is not about the document, it's about the work doing the planning. Planning is a verb. Big difference between internal and external plans. Let's, don't worry about the about external plans, just think about the internal plan, the tool, that you need for your business to help you develop your business and uh, continuously. Planning never stops. Make a commitment to ongoing planning. Five, forget everything you've always thought about how a business plan should look. Think about a form, form that works for you and your business. Uh, I've seen effective business plans in mind map form in colored sticky notes on a whiteboard with scribbles on a computer in a collection of one page documents loosely bound in the folder, in the forms we talked about earlier, in formal language, in pictures, or a combination of all of the above, make it work for you and make it simple. I've actually, there's, um, actually mentioned that I think in my first book, um, uh, there was um, uh, someone, uh, I've forgotten his name now, but anyway, he's a painter, um, and um, worked with him a few times, um, and he um, he actually attended some of the mastermind um, workshops before they became webinars and um, he used a fantastic example of a, a, a plan it was even less than one page it was really just a few words and um, there's three words actually local um, and the second one was charge enough to do a good job uh, no sorry Look, three words. The first one is local. The second one, do great work. And third, charge enough to be able to do great work. Um, and he runs a great painting company. And Pete doesn't find it very hard to make any money, but he makes he has a good painting company, a good business, fun business. That's, and his clients love, me, love him. Um, and everything he does is guided by those three statements. It's actually more a purpose statement than a planning document. But anyway... It's the center of his business plan. Um, so where was I? Uh, forget every... Okay, don't do it on your own. Do it with others. Involve others. Ideally, an internal plan fits on one page. And last, there's no such thing as a perfect plan. The best plan is the one that is live, used by everyone, has coffee stands over it, scribbles in the margins. Start now. We've got a couple of questions that have come in. Um, Daryl, um, like what you hear, um, I think this is going to help. Get over the hurdles. Um, where do I start? Okay. Great to hear, Daryl. And, um, and to be honest, I don't have the best way to start and answer, really. But personally, I like my own template, the one-page plan um, that you can download from the resources page. But before I'd start filling that in, I would probably get a mind map, just like Laura, 
did and do some brainstorming in it first, but that's just me. I like mind maps, especially there's a whole bunch of computer um, uh, uh, programs for mind mapping. There's one that's I'll put it in the I'll put it in the in the in the chat window here. HTTP xmind.net. Um, there's actually a free version which does. It's quite powerful. Xmind.net, and you can download it both from Mac and Windows. Um, I think it's a great uh, mind mapping is a great tool, uh, brainstorming tool to start with um, with um, with business planning. Um, and the other thing that's critical is that you do get this clarity about the purpose of your business. Before you, without that clarity about what the business is here for and why would anybody care, uh, it's difficult to build a really powerful life um, life business plan. So I, that's where I would start um, with your values and um, that question, what am I here for? Um, second comment, uh, question from um, from Carly. Um, um, uh, still a little confused about the value of old um, external business plans. Why are we told, why are we always told to create business plans like that? Um, and yeah, look, that is actually perfect because I actually wanted to talk about that before as well. But um, look, to be honest, I'm actually not sure. Well, I think it's because that's how the business world has always done them. Those external bound, you know, business plans with executive summaries and indices and you know, all that kind of stuff. I think it's because that's that's how they've always been done. MBAs, accountants, you know, bank managers, funds managers, that's how they make meaning of what a business is about. And and, and it's it's how the big business world operates. And so that trickles down. And of course, if you're an investor or you're about to invest a million dollars into a venture, well, you know, you want to you want to do your due diligence, as they call it. And you need to need more and more and different types of information to feel confident that you're making a good investment than, than if you're an employee in a company. But those old-fashioned external business plans are really about getting a deep insight into a business at a certain moment of time, as I said before. It's about getting a really comprehensive snapshot of what is the state of the business right now. It's not nearly as much as about providing a simple to use tool to use for the day, um, to use for the day-to-day -day strategic management of the company. Um, but it's the, yeah, it's, I think it's the big business world trickling down. And so, I mean, if you go to the library or the Amazon or online or you know, Dimex. Do we still have bookstores in this country? Anyway, so go to Dimex um, and you'll see there's, there's probably a hundred books on planning and that sort of stuff. And all of them, all of them are written about big business. And small business is simply different. It simply is. There's no, there's no argument. So anyway, um, they were great questions. I'm going to move on. Um, for us, time to move on. Um, in a moment, we're going to get to where some suggested actions, steps to take. Um, but before we move there, I want to give you some information, as I said, about how to take a next step with me. And I have a special offer. If Because in everything I do, I'm committed to help small business owners out of that overwhelm and into having fun in business. So let's have a look at what causes that overwhelm. What was your most pressing issue? When I asked you before to uh, to write down what is your most pressing issue, your biggest challenge in your business right now, have another look at that and um, and and just reflect on that again. Um, was it as bad as this girl's most pressing issue? I hope not because that would be too much. Um is that still what it is or has something changed, shifted? Because here's the deal. I want to help you with that most pressing issue. I want to help you find the simplest, most practical, effective steps forward in relation to that most pressing issue, your biggest challenge. I want to make it as easy as possible for you to take the next step so easy that it's a no-brainer. And this is how easy I'll make it. Um, if you take up this offer, you'll get... A really powerful six to seven page business uh, health check report. You'll get a hard copy of one of my three books in the 10 Truths Trilogy. And you get to sit down with me for up to an hour and a half via uh, video link, Skype, one-on-one, -on -one, and gain clarity and focus about where you want to go. 
and where you want to get to in your business. And you'll walk away with one or more simple action steps with the, um, that will start you moving past that big pressing issue and towards having more fun in your business. And all you have to do is make a $100 donation to the Wayside Chapel, with my favourite charity here in Sydney. It truly is the most fun and most effective charity, charity donation you've ever made in your life. And um, the offer is repeated on your worksheet with the web, web address where you can make the donation to, uh, um, to the Wayside Chapel. And if you want to read more about, uh, about the offer, it's, uh, there's a page on my website uh, newpsex.com.au forward, new forward slash program, programs forward slash free stuff forward slash trial you can just get get to that as well via the if you click on the programs tab at the top of the website anyway so back to the grind um, I'll remind you of the big insights business planning is in, is critical indeed it's not about the document, it's about the work doing the planning. There's a big difference between internal and external plans. Planning never stops. Make an ongoing commitment. Forget everything you've always heard about how business plans should look. Think about a form, form that works for you. Don't do it on your own. Involve others in your business and outside your business. Internal plans should, should and can fit on one page. There is no such thing as a perfect plan. The plan is the one that is alive. And start now right action nothing is going to happen in life unless we take action so here's a special resources so we've got the special resources page um that i've given you this um, there's a there's there's worksheets there there's room for taking notes and this is what i want you to do first Set some time aside over the next few days to be able to get into this. Be sure to do this. If you don't set some time aside to do something with what you've learned and heard here and the information I've given you today in the next few days, certainly no more than a week, then coming on this webinar has been a waste of your time. If you don't do something with this in the next week, it's been a waste, being, waste of time being here. The only thing that ultimately makes any difference is what actions you take. So commit now not having wasted the last hour go to the resources page download the templates um, watch the video read the video about the business model canvas read the article that I've got there you can re-watch the webinar in recorded form as well it will be up today's webinar will be uploaded in the next 24 hours and then um, and then Start and commit to starting. Maybe ask for support from a friend or a partner or a mentor or a business coach, doesn't matter, but get started in whatever form you think is going to work. Use one of the templates or start with a mind map or with lots of yellow stickies on a whiteboard, doesn't matter how, just start. And on the worksheet is a scale. On your worksheet is a scale from zero to 10. It's called your master of planning scale. 10 on the scale is that you are totally plan driven you're always planning you hold monthly planning meetings with your staff and everyone has a plan sitting on their desk all decisions and actions are based on your plan and zero on that scale is the opposite what number would you give yourself on the scale now mark that number on your scale now once you've marked the number on the scale ask yourself the question what do i need to do this coming week to move one small increment up my master of planning scale. What's one specific action I can take to move one small increment up my planning scale, for example, from 6 to 6.1? Now, this is the crucial bit. Get your diary out and book some time into your diary for that specific action or actions into your diary next week. And then next week, Next week, Thursday, ask yourself the same question again. And lastly, of course, I'd love you to take, to take up the offer. <clears throat> this planning, by the way, this planning, uh, sorry, this scaling exercise is unbelievably effective. It's just so incredibly effective. As long as you do it really practically, 
what is one small thing that I can actually time, uh, one small step I can book time in my diary for to do next week. And so when we're looking for something that, that you can book half an hour or 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour or, or an hour in your diary for four, not an intention, a specific action. You do that, you'd be surprised. You do that every week, you, your life will never look the same again, honestly. Um, so as I said, lastly, I'd love for you to take up the offer. It's truly the best offer you're, you're gonna, you, you've had all year. Um, to take a significant step toward building a fun business that sustains you for years to come. You're going to get lots and lots of value out of the um, out of the report and insights and clarity um, out of um, doing the session with me and, um, and you will have uh, practical stuff to move forward with. Best deal you've had all year, I can guarantee you that. Um, and the way side, of course, is going to love you as well. Um, and if you, and so we're nearly at the end here. If you take nothing else away from this webinar, remember that planning is a verb. We must always be planning in whatever form works best for you. On beer coasters or on the wall, yellow stickies on a whiteboard, but just do it. That's the resources page, of course. And that's me. Any final questions? Final questions from anyone? How did you go, Melissa, with your um, sporadic internet connection? Did it, uh, did it stand up okay? Um, any final questions? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to stop the recording now. Pleasure, James. Nice to see you again. We should catch up for a coffee soon. I'm stopping the recording. Uh, stopping the recording. <laughs>